the prosecutor in the case, he wanted to find some piece of evidence, you know, a murder weapon, a print that somehow tied Larry Vanner to the act of murdering Eun Sun Jin. What they came up with was the cat litter. There was a huge pile of kitty litter on top of Eun Sun's body, 10 bags worth of kitty litter. If we can find out where he bought all this cat litter, there might be a store employee who actually remembers it. It'd be like a needle in a haystack to try to locate the store where he bought the cat litter. It's just so many pet stores, it would be nearly impossible. And so Roxanne sort of takes on that challenge and spots a detail. I had been notified by the bank that there was some video of him at an ATM using Unsoon's credit card. I remembered that where that bank was, that little in that little shopping center, there was this really cool little pet store. And based on nothing more than that, she takes a ride out to the pet store. I walked in and I said, did this happen maybe? That somebody came in and bought a significant quantity of cat litter out of the blue? And he goes, yeah, there was this guy that came in and he bought 10 of them. And they described him to a T. Older guy, gray hair, mustache, beard, scruffy beard, bright blue eyes, you know, and, and he goes in, he paid cash. Ultimately, the cat litter was the key. The pretrial hearings for Larry's murder trial begin. And he pleads guilty. He doesn't fight it at all. He just says, I'm done, send me to jail. I don't want to talk about anything anymore. It was a huge shock to everyone, the judge, the prosecutor, Vanner's own lawyer. Roxanne has a hunch that Larry Vanner is hiding something. That he had this little girl that he said was his daughter, and he gave her away. Like, what, the, what was this charge of abandoning a child about? I think he believed if he pled guilty, I would stop investigating that aspect of his past. He goes to jail thinking it's done, but the case haunts Roxanne, and she keeps digging and keeps digging. I was really centered on the little girl, on Lisa. There were like little fingerprint cards, like with these little tiny little hands, and little they were had their little footprints on the back of them, and little tiny fingerprints, and it just made me angry and curious. Like, was this really his daughter? If it's not his daughter, where did he get her? Who did he get her from? I put in a request to do a definitive uh, paternity test. She got the blood sample from Vanner, who's now in prison, and she tested it against the sample they took from five-year-old Lisa. He was not biologically related to Lisa. Larry Vanner is not Lisa's father. Curtis Kimball was not Lisa's father. Gordon Jensen, Gerald Mockerman, it wasn't her father. Maybe Lisa's not Lisa. Once Roxanne saw the results of the paternity test, she called the San Bernardino Sheriff's Office. They had handled Lisa's case 17 years ago. And she was about to drop shocking news on them. Here I am years and years later, showing up and going, hey, you have a found Jane Doe, I believe. Initially, they were like, we don't have a case like that. And I'm like, yeah, you do. Roxanne basically tells them, you have a missing person, an unidentified victim who is alive, who still has a family out there to meet. It just made me determined to do everything that I could possibly do to try to find out who she was. In 2003, when the San Bernardino Sheriff's Department opened a new investigation aimed at finding her true identity, Lisa was 22 years old. I called Lisa and talked to her. She really wanted to know who she was. By this time, Lisa's an adult. She had grown up. So this rocks her world even more. Lisa learns that her father is not her father. She still has no idea where her mother is. She didn't even know what her given birth name may have been. With the realization that he was not Lisa's father, we started investigating who she was, where he took her from. So then the mystery becomes, whose daughter is she? 
And who's her mother and where is her mother? Because we know this guy kills people. We might be dealing not just with someone that killed one person, but we're dealing with a serial killer. That was the genesis of, of the investigation that would ultimately lead back to New Hampshire and to Bear Brook State Park. Police have still not identified the bodies of one woman and three young girls found in 1985 and 2000 in metal drums. In my Judeo-Christian heritage, there's this sentiment around murder that the blood of the innocent will call out from the ground to God. And it's going to find justice because its DNA is going to point at perpetrators. And how amazing is it that it was blood of the innocent, it was blood of little Lisa, that would go on to solve this mystery. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.